We have a certain reverence for Robot 8. I mean, to us, ro saying Robot 8 is equivalent to someone saying Messi or... Ronaldo. In his adventures in the internet and with artificial intelligence, Werner Herzog's gift for the unexpected doesn't desert him. He finds a robot maker in love with his star centre forward. This here is Robot 8. Um, it's very identifiable because its pattern includes four green dots on top and it's... It's one of our favorites, actually. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you love it? Yes, we do. When Newsnight met the jet-lagged but very much in control Werner Herzog earlier today, we asked the well-known football fan if robot players could beat the real thing. If robots become mechanically so good that they can run uh, like a human, then they can do it because uh, strategically, they're very far advanced, and you see computer programs, how, for example, they uh, have a free kick, and how they strategize positioning. It's very, very impressive. Sooner or later, somebody would have to teach them how to cheat. They may already be cheating. We do not know exactly, uh, but uh, we do know that uh, uh, whatever is within human beings will eventually end up on the internet. And in our anonymity, the human race is very vile and very debased. And it's not the internet that is debased, it's the human people. Herzog's beautifully composed oeuvre, which I for one have done my best to emulate, is surrounded by fanboy reverence. Is it possible that some miss the humour in it? Nobody misses the humour in my films when you are sitting in the theatre. You feel the ripples of laughter, I have seen it. Uh, and, and the biggest laughter is when you have uh, Buddhist monks in saffron robes against the empty skyline of Chicago. Then we met some stragglers left behind. They're all on their smartphones. Have the monks stopped meditating? Have they stopped praying? They all seem to be tweeting. Shall I come back again? Tell me, dear, are you lonesome tonight? Laughter doesn't stop from beginning to end dur during this sequence. It's like our program. That's good to know. We wanted to get a quick exterior shot of Herzog in his native habitat. There's probably a long German compound noun to describe Herzog's good cheer in the face of adversity. Nobody cares about my films. For example, what's... What was that? The last time he spoke to the BBC, someone shot him with an air rifle. And Herzog had been hit. Strange enough, yes, uh, and... I seem to be a statistical anomaly. I have attra attracted disasters. Ich werde mein Opa bauen! You'd never guess from Klaus Kinski's tentative performance as an opera-loving rubber tycoon in South America, but he and director Herzog were almost always at loggerheads. This production also witnessed plane crashes, and then there was the steamship Herzog hauled over a mountain. Nobody believed in uh, moving the ship over the mountain and a delegation of actors and te technical people came to me. Out, out! Give it a go! And tried to dissuade me from my own madness. And it was suspicious because they came with tea. The only thing that counts is what you see on, on, on a screen. When he's not directing, Herzog has been known to lend some middle European menace to the multiplex. You say nothing, but I see defiance in your eyes. That is a look I've seen many, many times. When the soldier comes, when you watch how he dies, it will change you. You will want to forget me then. <laughs> Sources close to Herzog told us he wouldn't disparage an offer to play a James Bond baddie. 
Let's close with an aphorism. It is better to ask a question that is deep and strange and unexpected than having an answer to everything.